I am thrilled to introduce you to Nicola Barnett. Today, we're going to talk energy patterns for health, vitality, and passion in life. And I already feel this amazing energy before we even hit the record button. So excited. And one more thing, and then the mic is yours. But our topic today about energy, I feel like what we need from you is this College Course 101. Dummy it down for us. Bring us in. We're so excited for you to pour your wisdom over us. Welcome, Nicola. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's such a pleasure to be here and opening your door to me. And yeah, I love your first question because it's like, what is energy? And I think back to myself 10 years ago before I started this energy journey, didn't really have any idea I actually thought people who spoke about energy were kind of annoying and so the joke is on me because now this is my life and soul and absolutely my life's work so great question let's get the basics in a very simple way that we can understand energy Perfect. is everything basically um, and when you actually look at a physics textbook energy says the capacity to do work so think about that from the perspective of your body. I think we're familiar with um, energy that you get from the power socket in your house, um, other kinds of energy like from the sun, solar energy. That provides a life force. But inside ourselves, our energy is really electrical. Think of our heart. Your heart is actually the largest electrical generator of your body, 60 times more powerful than your brain. Hmm. So we've got electrical energy that runs your immune system, your muscles, your um, heart, every digestive process needs electricity, your nervous system. So you have a big electrical energy in your body. Now that also means you have electromagnetic energy in your body. And then there is a more subtle energy that may not even be measured by scientific instruments at this time. So that's the energy in your body. And that is a massive part of how you think, how you feel, how everything operates within your body, whether you feel safe and protected, whether you feel grounded. So energy is everything. And that is actually a fact of physics. Energy is absolutely everything, the common yes. denominator. So it is everything you need to feel good in your life. So I have a question for you. Why do you feel like people feel like body energy is so woo woo when we don't look at a plug in our house as woo woo or anything that's just, is it just less tangible or less able for us to visualize? I think so. And I think historically ancient cultures have been so connected to a sense of energy in the body. Think of ancient acupuncture from cultures like Japan and China. They mm -hmm. understood there was an energy flow that they could connect to circuit by putting needles in certain reservoirs or pools and circuits in the body. But I think for us, it is intangible. And I think also for a practitioner, there is the quantum effect of the practitioner is as important as the person receiving the healing. And that really makes science a bit uncomfortable because they want to really be able to produce measurable tangible results yeah. Yeah. but actually okay. when you when you pop a pill and you think oh is this going to give me every single person the same result they have no idea really so sure. um that is also just to throw that out there but i think yeah. with energy it's because it's not as tangible but that is only because we have not opened a way to connect to it. And so simple and powerful tools will give you a sense of it that you feel. And then you're like, right, this is tangible for me. And I am experiencing this and anyone can have access to, to that. And that's what's so exciting about it. Absolutely. And I'm just going to ask all of our listeners to like stay in here with big open minds because it is until we get to experience something that we fully come on board. And so we have to at least like cross this threshold right now of going, this exists, people believe in it and it's real. And we're just not, we're not lucky enough to be exposed to it every day. So I'm just, I'm so thrilled to have you. And with all this experience <laughs> under your belt, 
And one of the things that you mentioned on your website was what is in the way of you tapping into unlimited energy every day? And I just think the word, when we look at it that way, like everybody wants energy. Whenever I ask clients, what's your number one thing that you would put on the success part of your journey? Like what would say, yes, I'm being successful, having more energy. And so, yes. ah, yeah. So go yeah. into that for a minute. It's absolutely the root of everything. And I'm, um, yeah, blessed to have been trained by some really high performance coaches that wouldn't necessarily be categorized as energy coaches, people like Tony Robbins and Brendan Burchard and his high performance habits books. One of the six things that determine high performance is generating energy. So it's absolutely fundamental to high performance or just any kind of activity and performance in your everyday life. I couldn't agree more. And so understanding what is in the way of accessing energy? Because, you know, there's always a really great example. It's like a um, couple have broken up. Guy, I'm going to use a stereotype here. Guy is on sofa feeling really depressed, eating pizza, can't get out of bed. It's like, oh, my God, I can't do anything. Where's his energy gone? It's totally gone. He just feels awful girlfriend calls him back goes I've made a terrible mistake let's get back together he jumps into action starts cleaning the house, and suddenly his energy has returned so that is a silly example but that gives us a clue to the fact that energy is in your physical body but it's also in your emotional body and your mental body so when I talk to people about how is energy categorized in you, it's at those three levels of being physical energy. Yeah. What you eat, the exercise that you do, what's the foundation of the moving, breathing, stretching that you have in your life? That is non-negotiable. I think everyone is pretty up to speed on that as an essential energy generator on the physical level of being. But then this is where it's starts to get more elusive. It's the emotional and mental realms of energy. So let's put on our energy glasses, I like to say. Let's pretend we could see the energy of your body. So I want to explain to you what we're looking at in terms of the physical, emotional and mental planes of existence. Now you are made of atoms. I think everyone is pretty much aware of that, but under closer investigation, what are those atoms made of? They're made of smaller particles orbiting electrons and nucleus, protons and neutrons, but actually they're more space than matter. Under closer investigation, those particles are more space than matter. So what does this tell us? It tells us that physical matter is an illusion. And by illusion, I do not mean it isn't real. I just mean it is not what it appears to be. So your physical body is a coalescence of vibration of energy, moving atoms, particles of vibration within that your emotions run as a vibration. So I'll give you a really simple example. Are you familiar with the phrase, I've got butterflies in my stomach? Of course. <laughs> yeah. So that is your sensation in your nervous system, in the organs of your body as a vibration. Your emotions are in your body. Sometimes we can feel them really strongly in your heart. You know, you get nervous about something or you get excited. You feel it in your heart, in your stomach. Sometimes we feel stress in our lower back. It's that constriction. So my point is your physical body, your emotional body is all a coalescence of vibration that is held in you. And then our thoughts, our intention, that is a finer form of vibration. It doesn't operate solely in your brain. That also moves energy in your body. I have a thought. I feel nervous. I feel it in my stomach. That's all levels of energy, different rates of vibration that you are experiencing as a unified field of energy. So that is the understanding before I answer your question, what's in the way of unlimited energy? It is a combination of thoughts, emotions, and our physical vibration. So 
to release a trapped emotion that maybe we had a breakup 10 years ago and we just feel like we've just never got over it. Maybe we just don't trust ourselves. That vibration is still in you. And so that's where energy work can go to a level of your subconscious that just thinking about it, it's like, I know what's wrong. I know this is the issue. I keep getting attracted to the same kind of relationship or I keep attracting the same kind of person to me. I know what the issue is. I can't talk my way out of it. Mm. That's why energy work is so powerful because it sees you at all levels and as a vibration that can be released, changed, transmuted. Does that make sense? It does. And I want to keep going with this specific example of the breakup. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, cause you mentioned tools that are helping in this energy work. So I feel like when I picture energy work, I do picture acupuncture or massage <laughs> therapy or, and I'm probably wrong. So what does energy work mean <clears throat> to you? Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right, Lindsay. That is all energy work because that's working at the level of the physical body, but that also means the physical body is actually a vibration of energy. Within that, your emotional body and your mental body, your memories and experiences are all in that coalescence. Information held as vibration. I will answer that in more in a moment, but I just okay. want to give you another example, a really simple one. So people are completely okay about receiving a phone call at great distance. I could, I mean, obviously we're um, communicating via technology right now, but <laughs> on the phone to Australia, for example, or you receive a voicemail. What is that? That is information coming on a radio wave of information, of, you know, transmitted energy that is received instantaneously. That's just energy is information held as vibration in your body. That is all around us all the time. We use those tools of technology that are man-made. You are significantly more sophisticated than any mobile phone. You have information held in you. So acupuncture can move energy and release emotions. Massage therapy could move energy that would release emotions, but... There is another level to energy work, which considers the person that you're doing it with, mm -hmm. because there are other specific tools and ways of intuitively tuning into a vibration in your body. For example, an emotion, every emotion has a different vibration that can actually intuition, um, you know, diagnostic in a diagnostic way, find out oh, that emotion is trapped in you and that is from a certain time in your life and we can simply move that vibration out of your body. And that might be, a, you know, that might be something that people are like, whoa, hang on a minute, I'm not sure about that. But again, um, my, one of my mentors, Tony Robbins, that stuff that he uses in his personal life, that's how he uses energy work. And those are tools that I use with my clients. So it so talk powerful. therapy almost like, is there an element of this that's it, you're, you're talking? I feel like, I don't know why I'm still confused on this. When yeah. you're moving a vibration out of your body, is that through conversation? And I know that you're having to dig to that point of a time that happened and you know how to, I don't know, like I can't picture how the release is happening. Yeah. So um, with one particular modality that I use called the emotion code, and that is also a book of the same name by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Um, Tony Robbins has written the foreword called the emotion code. I definitely encourage anyone to read it who is curious about um, how this works. It's understanding that vibrations can be moved out of your body just using a magnet. When you have connected to the information mm -hmm. you've registered that it's like yes this is here you're and you the client feels safe that it is possible to let this go then simply using a magnet can actually release that energy from your body interesting conscious emotions so the beautiful thing about this work is you might say oh i haven't got over this breakup 10 years ago but you don't really understand there might be a root cause that is deeper and you don't have to articulate that it might be 
oh, some grief you experienced when you were seven, for example, that actually needs to be cleared before we can clear this grief that has happened that you really know about later Mm. on in your life. And you don't have to articulate that. That is the beauty of just tuning in and diagnosing the vibration. Every emotion has a different vibration. It's super powerful. Yeah, I know. I'm loving this. So I'm picturing, does it need to be multiple sessions? Like I, I would feel like your client has to want this too. Like you could not pull someone off the street who has no belief in this and have them get great results. Like the person probably has to be just as invested as the provider. Yes. Totally. There is an aspect of if your energy feels safe and wants to open and is ready to change and wants some assistance to do this. Yes, that has to be a parameter because you have the power to say, no way. I am shutting my field down and it's not safe. And there is an energy system in your body which keeps everyone on alert, which is on overdrive a lot of time in the modern world and if that is not going to open at a deep subconscious level then change is going to be very difficult so yeah you have the power to say I am open to this or not um yeah definitely and I'm and not multiple sure. sessions. sorry you just said about the yes. multiple sessions and to answer that making sure <laughs> I get to every part of your question uh yes I actually work with clients for 10 sessions And I do that online or in person. Most of my clients are actually online. I have the ability, just like you can receive a mobile phone call at a distance, I can tune into the vibration, the information, and I don't need to be in the same room as you. Um, Again, that might be a stretch too far for some people. That's okay. Absolutely. I mean, I'm loving this, but this doesn't mean (laughs) it can be a seed that's planted for listeners right now that then they hear it again and go, Okay, keep hearing this. Like there's something totally. To this. It is the last frontier of modern medicine, and that was something mm-hmm. said by a Nobel laureate of medicine back in 1928. And I'm mm-hmm. so excited that now within this realm of energy psychology and energy medicine, there are yes. over 275 peer-reviewed scientific journals that support the efficacy of working with the body in this way and supporting trauma, PTSD. Um, It's actually been passed, I think in America now, it is actually um, approved for war veterans to use aspects of energy psychology that I use with my clients. I can share all of that research with you. Like there's incredible, wonderful research for those of us that um, really want to, yeah, top, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. And I appreciate that because I've come from that world of academia where I was like, energy what no way it's only when I experienced and have been through this 10-year journey including six years in the Amazon jungle working with an indigenous tribe not full-time back and forth that I've had the embodied experience so I understand if you're at the beginning of opening the door to an experience yes oh that I have chills that was so beautifully stated and and we will take you up on the research and we can put it in the show notes I would love to share Yes, that let's just let people keep diving in on their own. Absolutely. And I always say, just to finish that, sorry, it's about I'm not providing you with proof, I'm providing you with evidence. And it's your discernment and it's your call. It's like, can I look at this and decide for myself, does this feel like something that I want to explore further? So it is always evidence and not proof. And it is up to you, everyone in their own sovereignty and autonomy of discernment in that way. So just want to add that. And 100% agree. And I think this is what I'm loving about having a platform such as podcasting, because all of our listeners can just be little flies on the wall. And I know you have a beautiful YouTube channel as well. And I think this of all of your subscribers is that they can just sit back and take it as it is. It's not like we're pulling somebody in and saying, you have to do this. It's just, this is just something that's out there. It's available to you. It's a tool that's it's underutilized tool. Yes. Um, So yeah, you mentioned the word and I love this buzzword, you know, the psychology within the the vibrations, because now that we're talking, I'm like, we had a psychologist episodes ago, kind of already plant this seed. She, she was like, I don't want to go too deep in this. It's really hard to explain. And you're explaining it beautifully, but like when we need to shift 
an emotion, it's really more about shifting our vibration and less about like doing these positive word affirmations that we maybe don't believe at all. You're agreeing with this. Oh, I love that you said this. This is totally yeah. the crux of what I have realized is either going to help a transformation or just keep you stuck because people are like, yes, affirmations. I just need to say positive things in the mirror in the morning. Okay, so that is helpful to a certain degree, but let's understand that our conscious mind is not really running the show. Think of that picture of the iceberg. 5% is above the water. That represents our conscious mind. Everything that's under the water is our subconscious. So if our affirmations with our conscious mind are going, I am safe, I trust myself, it is safe for me to be my true authentic self, I can achieve anything I want, but everything under the water, your subconscious energy, which is information held, vibrating in and around you is going, not a chance in hell. Um, I don't trust myself. It is not safe for me to be seen or heard. That was a thing that I definitely had to work on. Um, a variety of things are emotionally and coded in our beliefs are going to keep us stuck. You can say affirmations for 50,000 years and they are not going to get to the root. So energy work can get to the root. It's like, is that belief, is that affirmation actually in my subconscious as truth? Or are there some significant emotions? It's always an emotional vibration that's in the way of that being true, of holding strong. And I think you might be familiar with, you know, if someone walks in the room and they're holding such a big energy and they light up the room versus you can almost feel if someone's in a bad mood before you've even seen them, if you know them well, or even if you don't know them well, that's information that's been given off. That's that wah, wah, wah coming out of their field. So we are sending and receiving information all the time that is being registered and perceived by our body, mind, our entire nervous system. So, yeah, I totally agree with what you said. OK, so I've always said this. I and <laughs> I've always said that I feel like I wear people's emotions. I very much can feel if, like you're saying when somebody comes in and puts off. I'm very susceptible to those energy givers and energy takers. And I feel like, so are you just saying, I'm just, I didn't have the right lingo for it, but it's the energy. It's the. Yeah, you are, you have an energy field. So we all have a bio field and aura that has been scientifically measured and discovered. It is consisting of electromagnetic energy. Your heart field, for example, creates a scientifically measured electromagnetic field that extends several feet away from your body so every time you're stood in close proximity with someone your heart the largest electrical generator of your body creating an electromagnetic field you can think of think of a magnet and some iron filings in school did you ever do that experiment where the iron filings would go from the north to the south of the magnet maybe not okay, maybe think, or i wasn't <laughs> the best student <laughs> okay think of the think of the earth there's a north and a south pole on the earth isn't there mm -hmm. yes. so that creates an electromagnetic field that kind of spools around the earth you are like that your heart is creating that field those waves of electromagnetic energy so you are picking up on someone else's information that is being held in that electromagnetic field all around them. And that is a scientifically measured field. There's nothing, you know, undiscovered about that. So yeah, you are susceptible and you are empathetic to receiving information in that way. You are intuitive, I would say. Hmm. Just interesting. Yes. It's a blessing and a curse, right? I feel like you're it's your way. greatest strength. And if we don't have tools to create boundaries, be grounded, for example, that is the one thing which we can do, then yeah, it's going to drain you, but it's, it will be your greatest strength if we know how to empower it. Harness. Yes. All right. I'm going to really put you on the spot because we're going to okay. shift this over into Emotional eating is a real thing, right? And I feel like this type of work, if we're talking emotions and emotions being in our way, can we kind of pick either a case study or just an example of 
if somebody knows that they're battling around certain emotions and they can even pinpoint the emotions that lead them to the kitchen, to the alcohol, to the whatever, what type of talk do you have around this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, it's understanding um, the trigger that sets people on a path to, I need that because, so everyone is completely individual, but what I see in clients most is one, it's not safe I, I'm using the word it's not safe quite a lot because at a subconscious level it's all about safety think of your subconscious like a five-year-old child it's your inner child that is where we have learned the way we operate in life so what I see in clients most often who have that issue is it's not safe for me to feel my emotions that was me for example I didn't have food as what I would reach for but I had quite a long prolonged addiction issue with that started when I was kind of 17 or 18 and went on till I was you know 30 and even a bit longer I'm 41 now with recreational drugs and lots of alcohol because it was not safe for me to feel my emotions and so it is the need to numb or self-soothe in the only way that we know how by eating food, which also gives us protection in the case of people who will hold weight on their body. So I had, it's not safe for me to feel my emotions. I'm not going to be in my body, but I often see with clients it's not safe for me to feel this. I need protection. I need to eat food. I need something to change my state. And so that's why they would often reach for food. So it's getting to the core belief of why they have that habit and also releasing the trapped emotions that are keeping that in place. And that often does stem from a traumatic experience. There's no such thing as big trauma and little trauma. It could be falling out of a tree when you were a kid it could be obviously growing up in a home that is not nourishing for you or learning from um, a parental figure when we're younger so many different reasons but it is around the root of I need to um, soothe myself and it's not safe for me to feel these emotions so interesting all right let's keep going with some of these just in general health habits, because you and I were talking about this. You live in Denmark. Yes, <laughs> I live in I Arkansas. Do. Yes. Our times are totally different, but it's dark where you are right now. Completely and we start, pitch black. Uh, yeah, pitch black. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sun's like blaring through my window. And we all know as we go into this winter season, that seasons affect us. So can you tell us a little bit about energy surrounding seasonal change? Yes, absolutely. So again, let's put on our energy glasses. Let's not see you as a physical body. Let's imagine you are a vibration of energy. That's your physical body as a vibration of energy, that electricity, that electromagnetic field coming out from your heart. If we saw the spectrum of energy that is actually the truth of your being, the electrical, electromagnetic and more subtle energy, we would open our perspective of wavelength of what we could see and we'd see you as this bubble this constant geometry, this bubble. And you would be in a bubble which is unique to you, but you are completely connected with the bubble of the environment. And so if we're looking at, through the lens of energy, through our energy glasses, the environment also is a wave of electromagnetic energy, the bio field of nature. Everything in nature, the trees, um, you know, the clouds, that is, again, a vibration of energy. So when those two meet at the change of seasons, if, for example, you are holding quite a lot of stress in your nervous system, maybe, you know, that's an electricity, you're quite tanked up with that extra charge, then when that season, when that vibration changes in nature and it meets your biofield, maybe you don't have the resilience to cope with that um, equilibrium shift and maybe your biofield goes and you pop a hole in your gasket. Oh, that's what I like to call it in your biofield. And then you get a really bad cold because the seasons have changed and you don't have that flexible resiliency in that geometry of your energy to hold that and receive that change in rhythm, that change in vibration. So I think we all know that when we go into winter, it gets still. 
the land goes still, things go deep into the earth. And that is reflected in the quality of the vibration around us. And so if we are able to hold and meet that change with ease, it means our system is, you know, we've got not very much stress in our system and also our own personal rhythm can meet that well. I mean, do you ever have, oh, I love that season. I come alive in that season. I mean, what's, what would that season be for you? Can you think of, I mean, for me, it's spring. Yeah, yeah I was going to say spring, summer, all my daylight, sunny times. My daughter always, because you love sunshine, because I always, every time I walk out, go, oh, I love sunshine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And of course, sunshine is incredibly healing. So I think that is a given for a lot of people, but you actually get more panic attacks and more anxiety in the summer season. Because again, think of the bubble. If you've got stress in your system, that electricity, that charge, and suddenly you've got the heat of the summer. Whereas if you were balanced, that would be super nourishing and you would ride that energy. It's suddenly like, whoa, too much, that fire is meeting my fire and again I'm gonna get a panic attack get anxiety and so we see these patterns in different times of the year they show up in different ways depending on how your bio field and your vibration is meeting the external vibration if that makes sense it does can you give our listeners kind of a tangible takeaway with this though so is there an element of this that means we adjust sleeping accordingly or I don't know. Yeah. Go into that. Brilliant, brilliant question. I can give you the most simple, powerful and profound way to maintain the resilience of your physical body, your nervous system, your entire energy body. And that is learning how to release this excess charge out of the tank. And of course, yeah, you could adjust your sleeping habits accordingly. If you have the luxury to go into hibernation in winter, that would be great. But for some of us, maybe that's not so much of a luxury living in the modern world. So how can we create resilience in our nervous system? It's learning how to open the tap and release the charge. And so think of yourself as an electrical being. You just make a, you're making a circuit. You know, you're you're plugging in to release the charge. So one thing I would say, there's some two incredibly powerful points on your forehead, right in the middle of your forehead. So if listeners are listening to the audio of this, this is so simple. You just need to take one hand, the palm of your hand, and place it gently over your entire forehead. Just so gently. And you might be familiar with times in your life. We sometimes call these, this is my mentor, Donna Eden, who's taught me this. Um, She's written an incredible book called Energy Medicine. But you might be familiar with times in your life where you go, oh my God, and you put your hand on your forehead like that. Or you might have seen people do that. That's because that is your intuitive way, your body's response of knowing how to soothe your nervous system. So just with the gentle hold palm of palm of your hand on your forehead the two points are right in the middle of your forehead they connect into your nervous system and every meridian energy highway in your body I encourage you to experiment with these because you could do it when you're lying down in bed before you go to bed prop your arm up on a pillow just see after five or ten minutes just notice how that changes and opens the sensations, the flow in your body. Notice your breathing or your heart and just do this by taking some really slow, deep breaths. I would recommend to do it for a minimum of a couple of minutes. You can do it throughout your day. You cannot overdo it. Mm -hmm. But that is one of the most simple and powerful and profound ways to release excess energy from your nervous system. And I can share a really incredible story my mentor Donna Eden experienced whilst using those points, a lady who was in a home for people with mental health issues. When she first started working before she became a full-time energy healer, she had just started this job and was walking down a corridor and she noticed a woman who was looking kind of in a bit of distress and the door was open. So she went into her room and she was lying on the bed and she just sort of motioned to her, "Can can I touch you? So she just put her hand on her forehead, just as we have then. And she just sat with her. They just sat in silence. And she held that there for like 45 minutes. 
And then suddenly this woman took a breath and <sighs> sat up and went, oh, hi, um, my name's um, Susan. I don't can't remember if that was her name or not. And I don't actually know how long I've been in here, but some terrible things happened to me. And she started telling her life story. And then this nurse came in and was like, oh, my God, no, you shouldn't be in this room. And then she was like, what? She's talking, but she hasn't said a word for two years. So I just want to share that story because I don't want you to underestimate how much our nervous system, when it's so full, everything locks down and freezes. That is where trauma is held. And that's how powerful holding these points can be just to keep you trucking along with resilience in the baseline of your nervous system, but also at a very profound level as well. Oh, so interesting and so well said, <laughs> well stated. Thank you. Oh my goodness. You're welcome. We, we haven't covered something really important yet though. You got engaged. Oh my God. <laughs> I did get engaged. Oh, thank you. I got engaged in Rome. My boyfriend, fiance, I should say, Martin, he's actually a spiritual artist. So we both have completely aligned interests. Um, I do the art with energy and healing and he expresses, um, yeah, through his art. So, yeah, he actually made uh, my engagement ring. He oh. melted down some of his granny's gold and sculpted this um, little snake. And his friend, who's a, our friend who's a jeweler, helped him set the peridot in the middle, which is a green stone, because it reminds us we met in the Amazon on a retreat. So it is our memory of meeting in the Amazon. So, yeah, it's super special. And it was amazing. So thank you for mentioning oh. that. Goodness, that is incredible. So, and it happened in Rome. Did you know it was going to happen? I had absolutely no idea, like literally no idea at all. And because of some mix up with the flights, we actually ended up getting there a bit later than we thought. And I had no idea. And it was my birthday. And he was like, right, could you possibly be ready to go out in like six and a half minutes? And I was like, oh, um, well, let me wash my hair so I can totally do it. Yeah, no problem. Let's do that. And then we went to this incredible place in Pantheon, uh, in Rome called the Pantheon, which is this 2000 year old, like cosmic geometry architecture that I love. And he was going to propose in there, but we got there and they just closed the door. Oh so he was like, obviously internally, I had no idea about this. He was like, let's just go get a glass of champagne and go for dinner. And we went to this amazing restaurant that he'd already booked, but we were not engaged at this point. So the next day he just like had the ring in his pocket and we're wandering around Rome. He's obviously like, what the hell do I do now? Yeah. And we were on this street corner. There wasn't really anyone around at this intersection and this big church was behind us. And I went, where are we? I don't have my phone. I grabbed his phone out of his jeans pocket and what, like being me, just being, give me the phone. And in the process of doing that, the ring, which wasn't in a box, it was just because he'd made it, it was just in his pocket, flew out in front of us. We both looked at it and then it landed on the floor on the pavement. And I was like thinking in my head, oh my God, what's that? Is that, I mean, uh, what's happening? Oh my God. And I could see Martin looking down going, Oh God, shit. It's now. Sorry, it's swearing. happening. It's now. <laughs> he was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to like make up a story? Is this going to happen? And it was all like in a split second, the time had like stopped whilst this was all like computing in his brain. And he just got down on one knee and said <sighs> some really amazing things and proposed. And oh. so that was amazing. And the great thing is it fits with our life philosophy, which is make plans. But if it doesn't go according to plan, don't freak out about it. And life takes care of life and let spontaneity arise and everything will take care of itself. So we actually feel like it was perfect. Oh, it's better than perfect. I feel like yeah. you just told us a movie scene. It was, it was so, <laughs> so it was good. It was good. Oh, so congratulations yeah. on Thank this you, new, my chapter. Darling. Oh, new chapter yeah. of life. Very cool. Totally. Yeah. Oh. As we wrap up, let's just make sure everybody knows where to find you. And, and then also, if you were to wrap your arms around mm. all of our listeners, what is just that one tidbit that you're like, please, please hear this? Yeah, thank you. And I want you to know that back in the day when I was lost and confused and stuck in my head, I just spent so much time whirring away with my thoughts. So I invite you to use that move by putting your palm on your forehead and create some space because inside of you is 
all the wisdom that you need. You have in your heart the wisdom of ages and to spend a little time understanding your energy and getting connected to that gives you such a sense of grounded trust. It connects you to the magic of life. It opens a doorway to spirit in a way which could be nature or your creativity or whatever you need in your life that is unique to you. So learning a bit about your energy, creating some stillness and space will completely change your life. So if you feel ready or inspired to do that, I invite you to learn some simple tools or come on a deeper journey. So good. And where do we find you? So and we'll put it in the show notes as well. So uh, my website is nicola.energy, um, but my Facebook page and my Instagram, I actually run a free monthly guided meditation ceremony for people who are curious about energy. That's usually in the first week of every month. Uh, the next one coming up is called Inspiration, connected to the energy of your lungs and how we can open to deeper inspiration, higher inspiration within ourselves. So yeah, every month is a free live guided at 60 minutes energy ceremony. And it's usually at a time where Americans can tune in too, which is great. I have a lot of clients in America. So yeah, that's a good way to find me on Instagram, Facebook, or via my website. And I would love to answer any questions. If anyone has any specific questions, you can book a free clarity call with me, um, you know, just to find out more. Well, you are fabulous. And just to make sure, is that live only or can we get that 60 minutes recorded as well? What is that? So like? with the energy ceremonies, I actually only am doing them live oh. at the moment. I feel like, yeah, it's a container where it's like, if you can make it, then show up and it's live and they're every month. So if you miss one, there will always be another. So yeah. And I actually have an online experience coming up that I'm launching in January, which is awesome. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Yes. I mean, you can tell us a little bit about it in last year. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've um, run it a couple of times before. It's called Your Energy Reset and Recharge. And it's a five week experience where I take you through really amazing energy techniques to get you grounded to create resiliency in your aura. That would be brilliant for you, Lindsay. It's how to um, empower this empathetic sense in a way that keeps you protected. Um, there's also a way to reduce stress, stress and boost your immune system. Loads of incredible tools in there. And then every week we'll do um, a guided ceremony to help you have that space and stillness to hear your inner wisdom. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. It's going to be good. No, oh, that sounds fabulous. You yeah. are wonderful. Thank you so much. You get to be done with work for today and, Yay, check out totally. and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. It's been such a brilliant conversation. I know I've probably talked quite a lot, but I suppose that's what talking and sharing is all about. You got it. That's why you're here. <laughs> so have a good <laughs> Thank evening. Thank you, my darling. Take care. Bye-bye.